All right, you guys, I think it's time to move on to the rebuild videos. A couple of things left I want to get off, but uh, from this point on, we'll be uh, rebuilding stuff. Got some things I want to move around. I got the support like way over here up against the the cab, which isn't necessary because I'm going to I'm going to build off the cab, so I don't really need the support right there. Um, so I'm going to take that off and put it on the other side of this one, and that will be the back of my living area. But, uh, oh, look! I can actually see what this is now. Eight pulses. I think this has got to be a speed sensor. This had cruise control in it. It was never working, but um, there's no other way for the cruise control to know how fast you're going. So I think that might be for the cruise control. That is directly on that speedometer cable. So yeah, that's got to be what that is. This will be the kick down connection. I heard somewhere that disengages the transmission unless there's a vacuum like if the you know if the engine's not running transmission's not engaged maybe i don't know
All right, I think we're just about done cutting and grinding. Got this, uh, I don't know what you want to call this, a girder. Or uh, just uh, one of the main supports for the, for the RV, uh, for the body. I'm going to put that back here, line it up with this back one, and that will be the back part of the living area and then from there back we'll do a flat bed and that works out almost perfect it's just uh maybe a foot or two longer than what i measured i measured out 14 feet which is from the front of the rv all the way back here uh for the square footage i bought so that should still leave me enough to do what i want to do got a bunch of these um These smaller sports, I think it was just for holding up the floorboards. A couple and a few random spots. I think it was just extra support. Got those cut out. Got the generator box cut out. Got the battery tray removed. I've been liking the look of this... Uh, RV without cabinets actually it gives it a lot of ground clearance and if I ever get out somewhere real rugged that's gonna be very handy to that extra ground clearance but uh, if I need extra storage I can always weld up something under there but uh, for, for batteries I'm gonna try and get those as centered as possible find some way to put those in here maybe I could squeeze them in between the storage t uh, yeah the holding tanks got this piece removed up here just to give me some more room for working on stuff I'm gonna put I think all the fuses in the center or off in the passenger side I'm gonna clean this up and seal it up and yeah, I might still use it to send wires through I'm not sure yet um, I'm decide I keep thinking about the door doors are expensive um, so I'm thinking I really don't need a driver door. I never really, really used one in the first place. It didn't lock, so I just chained it shut with a bike cable. And it's not really necessary. But that leaves me with the question of what am I going to do for doors and a window. I do still need a window. I suppose I could find an RV window with the you know slides open or something. I'll uh, work with it as I go. But yeah, that will make things a whole lot easier. Just not worrying about the the doors. At least not a vehicle door making a square door that'll be easy or rectangle you can even get just an rv door they're a whole lot cheaper than a 
driver door with the roll-up window and stuff. But I think I'll just make one out of this uh, out of the square tubing we got here. Um, and I want to put it on the back. I kept uh, I've been tossing that idea back and forth ever since I started designing the RV. I liked the idea of being able to walk out onto my flatbed like a patio and barbecue and you know just have easy access to the back there but But I don't want a back door and a side door because that's going to take up a lot of room space on the wall where I could hang things or where I could put a desk. You know, I'm not going to have a lot of space to work with anymore. So I can't have two doors on this RV. So I think it's either going to be on the side where it used to be, except up at floor level without steps or not like it used to be anyway, um, or on the back, which I think is really cool. Appropriate that I have a side door just for guests or managers knocking, but I guess that doesn't, I guess they could just knock on the windows. Like you would in a semi truck. So yeah, I like the idea of a back door. I'm get this other side put on. It needs to be trimmed because it's um it was mounted on this lower spot of the frame. This stuff's been raised up and uh, reinforced for some reason. I guess that's beefed up for the generator that might be beefed up for the battery and the propane tank so yeah i've just got some reinforcements here just strange it goes from big beefy uh girders can you call those girders to this stuff it's like yeah i, I probably probably can't even put my body weight on that probably can't even support 160 pounds that one can that's a little beefier but uh yeah 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 that works out and i'll have a little space here to run my exhaust up on both sides for exhaust stacks you know i gotta have them i'm gonna do a little patchwork here cut a little i mean that's probably fine but just for peace of mind i'm gonna patch over these little cut marks where i went a little too deep cutting out the weld on um, this side's actually probably fine yeah, I'll just put a little chunk there. Do a chunk here, just in case. Also cut off this little tab over here. I can't remember what that was for, but there's not one on the other side. This is used for mounting the dash. And it's already going to be hard enough to insulate in behind that without having another tab down here. So I just cut that off. Because um, we're going to put the wall on. And then when we build the interior, we're going to have to slip in or spray in insulation in between this and then... Just need to cut off this little part sticking out square this up and then that will be just like that This will be perfect for a little patch over here. 
like that. We got a way to hold this in place here. Leave a line visible so I can line it up. Nice, looks, looks perfect. Let's do this. This will keep things squared up and be a little more secure. in here just for a little more support a little tin foil on that fuel line to just to prevent any slag from sticking to it or even causing damage, that would be really bad. Um, tin foil uh, kind of just vaporizes when molten metal hits it, but I've put on a few layers. It's crinkled up, and if nothing else, it'll give it time, give any slag or molten metal time to cool down before it hits the pipe. But there's a few layers on there. I don't think anything will get through that. But just one. One layer just kind of vaporizes. So we've wrapped that up pretty good. All right, finally got the settings dialed in. First one always looks kind of rough, but uh, this A, B, C, D, E thing on the link in here is kind of annoying. It doesn't, uh, chart isn't very accurate, so you have to kind of figure that out, out as you go. But there we go. Top's welded on. All right, got that on. Looking good. All right, we got those little nicks braced up. Clean this welds up a little bit. I think I'm reaching the limit on this little wire feed. So I'm having a hard time getting the welds to sink into the metal here, though it does look like it's penetrating. All right, you guys, it's official. We've started the rebuild. Gonna plot the square tube here in the next video and get things framed up. I noticed this is broken. So, so I will re-weld that little support bar there. Um, but my helmet broke. It's got plastic screws in it, and when I was tightening it, one broke, so I need to go get me a new welding helmet. 
So we will continue this in the next video.